I've just been doing this for a long time with you, buddy. What? <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to have fun again. <laughs> Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, a little ridiculous. Good boy. Play all the hits. Let's Toronto Maple Leafs. Let me finish. How am I supposed to go to bed after watching that? I'm quite hyped. With you wherever you are, welcome to LFO. Everybody who only watches LFRs when the Leafs lose, Leafs lose! 3-2 to the Ottawa Senators in Ottawa. I hate it there. Not in Ottawa, the city itself. The, the, the city itself is actually kind of good. You're having a night out on the town, you have dinner or something, and you're like, hey, I'm actually enjoying myself. I'm gonna go to the game. Hey, where is it? And the answer is nowhere near any of the things that you're doing, but everyone just wanted to get out of the house and they did. And oh my goodness, so good having fans back in the building. Let's talk about the game, but really quick, I wanna talk about the method of these LFRs because you're noticing back-to-back -back nights with night of videos, which is rare for me. So I'm not gonna lie, after 14 years, I'm finally getting some editing help because, um, you know, there's only 24 hours in a day. It's not that many. I mean, it's definitely not enough anyway, but because I'm doing night of videos and I don't have time to like have my morning coffee, watch the highlights in full, I'm taking lots of notes and I'm writing little cutesy notes like, oh, David Kempf, uh, uh, first Leaf highlighted by the broadcast. He made a great little play at the blue line. That's good. Leafs have to make a little defensive breakup and Mitch Martin did a funny thing with his hand and he stopped it and it was good. All those little notes, they're all things you saw. You saw them and they're funny and they're noteworthy and whatever. They get in the way of the story. The story is this team cannot genetically deep down into strands of DNA and things I don't understand play a 60 minute game. Cannot incapable. If the Leafs spit into a tube and sent it off to 23andMe, they would come back and find out they were 100% inconsistent. Honestly, the most positively consistent thing about the Leafs is William Nylander scoring and Jason Spezza never disappointing us in any way ever. Forget all the notes. This is a game in three parts and I'm gonna tell you about it. Part number one. The Leafs actually have a pretty good start. I'm watching it going, hey, this is a much better start than it was against Montreal. But oh, all the attention to details, the Stanley Cup habits, Pierre Engvall turnover at the defensive blue line, can't get it out, and then the Sens pass it around and, oh, well, I mean, the puck is in the net, but surely that's coming back on account of Chris Tierney kicked it in. It's a kick, he kicked it in. And you might be saying, yeah, well, the other night in the Seattle Kraken game, in the Kraken game, they were wrong too. Yeah, but the rule says, I don't care what the rule says. The rule is wrong. That's not a kick. Hmm? This is not a kick. That's a redirection. How about I redirect you in the back of your pants? All of Canada getting up out of their seats because of Alfonso Davies' magnificent redirection. It's a goal or is it? Never mind. Let's review or oh, no review at all. None. So the fastest review of all time. All right. All right. I guess we're just playing then. I guess we're just. Nothing about that entire sequence made sense and then the angry part of me the part of me that is still mad at the team was like good good I'm glad Sheldon Keefe didn't challenge that I'm glad or maybe he did or whatever and maybe I'm reading into this too much and maybe I'm just putting myself in his shoes if I were him and I had a chance to challenge it I wouldn't don't turn it over at the blue line there's your lesson don't do it don't do it oh you had a good game last game yeah, we're just going to ignore the mistake that almost cost the team the game and sent it to overtime with like 13 seconds left? Oh, that's a bit harsh, Steve. Is it? Stanley Cup winning habits, they were up 3-1. I don't care. That's what this entire season is about. That's why you're here. Steve, you're being a bit too negative. Oh, I thought that's what you liked. You want to see my top five most viewed videos over the last 48 hours? The top three are videos I made this week. Number four is game seven from May and the David Ayers game from over a year ago. I'm getting too hung up. Let's keep going. Wayne Simmons takes a slash. The Sens go to the power play. You can't have that happening from your fourth line. And the Sens get a goal because they fire the puck on from the blue line, hits Justin Hall in the leg, hits Tyler Ennis in the arm and in. What is Peter Morazic? By the way, Peter Morazic was in it. What is Peter Morazic start uh, supposed to do? And the answer is stand in that crease and let the team in front of him let him down like every goalie over the last half century. He still has not given up a stick goal. And then at the end of the period, with less than a second left, four men on the one timer that might have deflected. Doesn't matter. It's three nothing after one. Leafs down three nothing. 
to Ottawa in a first period that did feature Brady Kachuk on the Jumbotron because he wasn't even playing! So the Leafs are down 3 0, and then I start to collect my thoughts. Peter Morazic makes an amazing save at the beginning of the second period. And I'm watching this and I feel like I could sort of see the, the forest for the trees, whatever that saying is. And I look at the score bug and I go, wait a sec. We're 25 minutes into this game. The Leafs have 22 shots. Anton Forsberg has been really good. He's made at least four or five really amazing saves. At least two of the Sens goals were kind of lucky. One of them shouldn't have even counted. Maybe I'm overreacting. And I type that note into my phone as a little moment of zen. And the Leafs immediately got outshot 12 to 1 by the Sens after I typed it into my phone, I swear. I cannot wait to talk about this on the podcast tomorrow with Adam Wilde because I was texting him. I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's just a bad break. He said, bad break? He was getting tweets. Oh, come on. It's the second game. Second game? Not for this group. No. Bunting, maybe. Richie, maybe. This core? This group, they've been together a long time. This is Nylander's seventh season with the team. Tavares has been here with a while. Morgan Riley was drafted in 2012. Remember Coney? And then just like in the first period, it wasn't good enough to give up a chance at the very end of the first period. The Leafs give up a golden opportunity at the end of the second. Peter Mrazek makes an amazing save and immediately goes down in pain and hobbles down the tunnel at intermission. He would not return. What did I say last video? Mrazek and Campbell combined for 34 games last season. Campbell 22, Mrazek 12, and Mrazek is already hurt. Not good. So, okay, um, third period. You got 20 minutes. Let's see what you can do. Campbell's in net. All right, I like that. Woo! Early power play opportunity. All right, I like that. And I think the best thing you can say about this game, or at least the best takeaway, the first power play through two games has been abysmal. They got the one goal out of the second power play unit in the first game, in the Habs game, but the first power play unit looked terrible. And then they come to life! I swear Spezza plays his best hockey when the rest of the Leafs look like garbage. Just a vintage rocket top corner! They finally solve Anton Forsberg. The Leafs at least have one. The Leafs have an eight-shot power play in there, and Josh Brown cross-checks John Tavares. They're cracking down on that. You can't do that. It's not the only thing they're cracking down on this year, but you can't do that. So the Leafs head back to the power play. The Leafs give up an odd man rush on that power play. Again, Pierre Engvall comes back. I thought it was a stick lift. Maybe he got his stick in the hand. The power play is negated. I criticize Engvall for the turnover on the first goal. I'm not going to give it to him on this one. I, he might have prevented a goal there. A little bit later in the period, the Leafs still playing well. Michael Bunting agitating the Ottawa Senators. Chris Tierney knocks him over. You can't do that. And he is redirected into the penalty box. And to their credit, the first power play unit looks amazing again. William Nylander, rocket, goal again. And the Leafs are within one. I hate, I, why, why? Why are you giving me hope? Why are you doing that? It's mean. Oh, and what a pass from Spezza with 11 minutes to go. It's mean. Less than a minute to go. The Leafs pressing. Loose puck. John Tavares. Stick lift. It was a stick lift. Penalty. That's that's the game, basically. Because the puck, the, the faceoff goes back down to the Leafs zone. They got to find a way to win that faceoff. Get it. Clear it so that Campbell can go to the bench, and uh, there's no time. Keefe didn't like it. He screamed a big old bunch. Okay, the masks. We gotta find some sort of middle ground here because like, we acknowledge the need for protection, but also every coach in the league just pulls it down to scream, which is the opposite of what you should do. Do we get him the clear Hannibal Lecter ones? Like, I, I, I don't know the solution, but I'm positive this is bad. We're here on the bench. I'm concerned about safety. Talk about strategy, concerned about safety. That call was nonsense! Back to safety. Back. Anyway, the clock winds down and the Leafs are not rewarded for a good third period. Good. And you know why? Because forget the fan base, the team was bothered by the way that last season ended. The team was bothered by a terrible start to game five that the Leafs eventually came back from and lost. They were upset about a terrible game six and even worse game six where they were down and came back and lost. We won't even bother talking about game seven where they played terrible, had an okay third period and lost. Yes, some funny bounces. Yes, second half of a back-to-back. -back. Yes, 
46 saves from Anton Forsberg. It's a tough league, and they didn't play the whole game. They didn't. They rarely do. It's a big, big, big ol' problem. Questions? Why is it always the Sens? Because the Sens work hard and the Leafs struggle against teams who work hard. Ooh, we're starting there. Did you know there are these 20 minutes before the game starts they're calling the first period? Shocked and confused by this. Yeah, it's the strangest thing, but there's some contention about what to call it. Some are calling it the first period. Others are calling it that period where Joel Armia ruins your entire season. Also that period where kicking is allowed. In Seattle, that's also the third. Do you have a spare groin? Oof. Uh, how scared would you be if Sheldon Keefe yelled at you like he yelled at the refs? Oh, scared. I'd be very scared because Sheldon Keefe would be able to yell at me without the fear of being fined $25,000 for offering me legitimate criticism. Why not sleep instead of making a video? Because the internet smells my sadness and they've come to feast! Are you ready to accept that the Buffalo Sabres are winning the Stanley Cup? Yes or no? No, you know what? You, you guys deserve that one. You, you deserve it. I'll let you have it. You deserve it. Well, now that we're all here, I want to end on a positive note. Once again, I'm going to be playing hockey, terribly, in the Eric Lindros Celebrity Hockey Classic that helps support Easter Seals. Easter Seals Ontario is a charity that means a lot to me. It helps out kids with physical disabilities. They helped on my sister. They helped on my family. I got to go uh, to their summer camps a couple times when I was a kid. It was a great time, and I want to help kids be kids. So... Link in the description down below. If you can offer a few dollars, a few cents in a, in, a, in a little donation, that would be an amazing thing. My team is Rachel's Raiders. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends Rachel's Raiders in the description down below. And hey, I'll see you Saturday live on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. Watch a Leafs game with Steve Dangle. That's me.